Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to go back to August 1983 in the issue of Dragon Magazine number 76. This one's really nice beyond having a great cover. It's got an index in it. It's the index of the first 75 issues of Dragon Magazine. I found this index very useful back in the day. So we're going to go through the uh, entire magazine, take a look at it, what advertisers were telling us to buy at the time, and uh, otherwise having some fun. Uh, also, I just want to remind you, subscribers, please, and patrons, please, to existing subscribers, subscribers and patrons, I want to say thank you. Uh, I would like to grow the channel, continue it growing, and I would like to grow the Patreon so I can continue to get improve my equipment and otherwise uh, make the channel better. So if there's anything you can do to help, please let me know. Also, Jump Point, please see the link below. Jump Point's happening very soon as of the posting of this video. We're going to go ahead and have a lot of fun. There's going to be AD&D 1st Edition played there, as well as Mongoose Traveler 2nd played an outstanding comic and game store, Amazing Fantasy, in Frankfurt, Illinois. All the information is in the link below. Please join us if you can. If you're going to join us, please leave a comment here or on the uh, Jump Point uh, web or the video itself, just so I have an idea of who's coming. We are playing on a first-come, first-served basis. Right now I only have two GMs, me and my son Adam, and uh, that means I can only seat 16 people, 8 in Traveler and 8 in D&D. &D. So if you're planning on coming, please let us know. Back to the important stuff. Dragon Magazine number 76 from August 1983, today on page 121. Dragon 76 from August 1983. I love this cover, always did. Uh, female Cavalier, I'm assuming. Uh, fighting some kind of evil creature in the well with a mage looking on either trying to help or being the one that conjured the creature. Who knows? I always like this cover. <clears throat> we open it up, and there we have Harn, the dawn of, the new, of a new fantasy world. Uh, Harn was around for quite a while in the 80s. I had one or two products of theirs. I don't remember much about them. Uh, no, I really don't remember playing Harn. I don't think I did. Rollmaster, ICE's complete fantasy role-playing game system that focuses on realism. Yes, it does. Boy, were you going to spend some time with uh, tables on, if you played this. I did play Arms Law, Claws Law, Claw Law, and Spell Law. Uh, I did play those at uh, the old club I used to belong to <clears throat> under one of the GMs there. Now we go to... The Fine Table of Contents, August 1983. Kim Moan was still the editor for this fine magazine. And we get the Table of Contents here. And we get the uh, letter, or the editorial, and then letters to the editor out on a limb. <clears throat> and ad observations from somebody writing in about the ads. And magazines will split fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, let's see, this is... Uh, uh, Fantasy Enthusiasts, let's see. Oh, Aries, okay. Aries Magazine. Uh, both magazines have narrowed and streamlined their focus. Aries will now focus on uh, sci-fi articles like Gamma World, Star Frontiers, Traveler, that kind of thing, and Dragon will stay with fantasy. That didn't last real long. Aries lasted 12 or 15 issues and then got rolled in in an outstanding move for the, the fans, got rolled into Dragon Magazine. So Dragon Magazine, for a couple of years, had a dedicated sci-fi aspect. That was pretty neat. StarQuest. Have you ever always wanted to experience the thrills of your favorite science fiction books and movies? Here's how. Okay, these guys are, you are a special agent of the Imperial government. And you got a StarQuest player's kit if you send it right away. $6. And it was Entertainment Concepts out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Ecology of the Beholder. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I want to actually take a look at the Beholder in its own video. This is written by two powerhouse writers, Ed Greenwood and Roger Moore. I read the heck out of this article, and I've always loved Beholders. They're one of my favorite monsters in D&D, but I'll do their own video. Now we come to a house ad. The probabilities indicate we stock every imaginable role-playing game. The Dungeon Hobby Shop in Genoa City, Wisconsin. And we've got the Wizard's Corner, Saskatoon's Fantasy Role-Playing Game Center in Saskatchewan, Canada. James Bond, 007, Role-Playing in Her Majesty's Secret Service. This is a game brought to, you, to us by Victory Games. This was the summer that gave us not one but two Bond films. 
Never Say Never Again, Sean Connery's last Bond film, kind of the knockoff Bond film, and the ever great, he said with a question mark, Octopussy with Roger Moore. Uh, I consider Octopussy one of the worst Bond films ever made, but that's just me. Uh, 1983, though, we got two new Bonds in the theater. Next we go to, for, for NPCs only, The Death Master. I am going to take a look at The Death Master at the, this class because, this is written by Leonard Lakofka, I have allowed The Death Master as a player character class. I actually had one, uh, two, in my campaign over the years. So I'm going to take a look at this in its own video as well. Have you missed any of these great issues? Uh, some back issues you can buy from TSR. Grenadier opens the door to your next adventure. Grenadier models. Grenadier has some nice models. Call of Cthulhu. Different Worlds magazine. I have an issue with two of those around here somewhere. The rest of the uh, Deathmaster article. FRP AIDS and board games. Fantasia, fast, easy to learn game of strategy. Uh, and this is a play by mail. Uh, we have uh, play by mail, manifest destiny, high tide, and ancient campaigns. Play by mails were very popular then. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina, from Viking Games. Deathmaster article continues on, continues on for another couple of pages. We come to uh, add for unit trays, store trays with snap-on lids. Counters and lead figures do not fall out. And for close simulations, Northbrook, Illinois. I transporting your minis was always a challenge for me. I almost always was the DM, so I had to cha uh, transport my minis or uh, any of the dungeon setting pieces that I had. I didn't have a bunch of 3D dungeon stuff then. We are using paper or uh, some cardboard tiles that I had, but I always brought lead figures. Funny story. Going up to a friend's apartment one time, uh, I tripped, and I spilled a tray of minis. There were a bunch of cobalts. I thought I'd gathered them all back up off the carpeted stair that I dropped it on, and we went up and we played for five or six hours. Coming out of the apartment, a few beers later, walking down the stairs, what do I find hanging to the back of the stair? But one of my cobalts, he'd been waiting for me. <laughs> I found him on the way out the door and was able to put him back in his case, safe and sound. It's funny that I dropped him when I hadn't had any beer, and I found him when I had had beer. <laughs> Go fig. Figure feature, new releases. These are from Ralph Partha. TSR Incorporated, Dragon Tooth figures. Uh, I always liked Ralph Partha a lot. Dragon Tooth had some nice stuff. I thought the TSR sculpts left a little be desired, which always surprised me, uh, because TSR, of course, being the, the ones that kind of started it all, you'd think that their sculpts would have been the best. The Science Fiction Gaming Convention calendar. If you hurry now, you can get to Mysticon, August 12th through 14th of 1983. And, of course, Gen Con, when it used to be held later in August, August 18th through the 21st. And then we get Mock, the first colony, a role-playing game of uh, Soldiers of Fortune in a New World by Michael Lang. Play uh, Mail-order game, $20. $20 is a lot of money back in 1983. The Nine Hells, Part 2, for, by Ed Greenwood. Here we get layers 6 through 9 with all the attendant demons and princess, princesses of hell. This is a really good pair of articles by Ed Greenwood. Add some magic to your campaign. The Complete Alchemist, The Complete Spellcaster. Both available at fine hobby stores. Finer hobby stores, sorry. Greenwich, Greenwich Connecticut. Continuing on, we get the eighth layer of hell. Uh, we'll be getting to the ninth in just a moment. We get to... The Companions, adventure here as you enter the inn, the commotion at the wharf attracts your attention. Welcome to Streets of Gems, an adventure module from the Companions Incorporated. These were out of Water Street, Bath, Maine. Okay, we're in the eighth layer of hell still, still the ice, icy one. We get to the, we stay in the eighth layer still, we'll get to the ninth in a moment. Your dragon hunt is over for only $10.00. Save $4 in Dragon Tooth's unpainted kits of D79 Dragon. Uh, this is uh, Dragon Tooth from Dragon Tooth in New York, New York. Here we have, I opened my leather bag, dice bag, and rolled out them out, caressing the ivories. From Bandersnatch Leathers. These guys have been advertising for quite some time in Dragon. 
<clears throat> Earthwood. Uh, set in a fantasy world, Earthwood is a strategy play-by-mail game. This was from GSI out of Miami, Florida. And RuneQuest Pavis, Threshold to Danger, from Chaosium Games. Continuing on, the layers of hell, we finally get to Nessus, the ninth layer of hell. The Challenge of Starship Command. Starfleet Battles Commander's Rulebook. I did play Starfleet Battles. I liked that game. It was pretty good. Especially if you had the Legendary 7, the original crew of the Enterprise. The game got really fun. From Task Force Games. Continuing on, the layers of hell. Out of the mists of forgotten time come the heroes and monsters of the lost worlds. From Manchester, Connecticut, Nova Game Design. Rail Partha teams up with Nova. Combine the best figures with the best games. That's pretty cool. Finishing up the very long article. This article was so long it was broken into two parts and it still dominated both issues it was in. The Sword in the Stone, handcrafted sterling silver sword with genuine black onyx stone for $24.95. Uh, from Silver Dragon in Providence, Rhode Island. $24.95 was not inexpensive in 1983. <clears throat> Take a science fiction odyssey to the distant worlds of the galaxy with Traveler, the game of the far future. From Game Designers Workshop from Bloomington, Illinois. I, as you may know by now, I love Traveler. Continuing on, all the various Dukes of Hell. Cast your own fantasy figures. The Duncan Company, Calvert, Texas. Early form of make your own figures. And then magic alterations in the Hells. These were always very useful. How the various spells work or don't work in the various uh, plane that you're on. Discover new adventures to your role-playing games. From Towns of the Outlands, The Black Tower... To Land of the Isles, from Midkemia Press, out of San Diego, California. Disaster has struck. Aftermath, from Fantasy Games Unlimited, and Daredevils have adventures from Fantasy Games Unlimited. These guys that brought us Space Opera. They brought us a lot of different games. Space Opera is the only one of those I know for sure I played. Continuing on, all the various magic item alterations for being in the Hells. Terra 2, medieval play-by-mail game. Turns, proce turns processed by a computer. Wow! From Clemens and Associates in San Clemente, California. And then we get the end of the Hell article, and we get the strategic review. Name the Dragon Magazine. Appearance, one of a, frequency, one of a kind. Number appearing 1 through 74, plus strategic review, which is the early version of Dragon. Find lost article, avoid confusion. Yes, the article index. This was so important back in the day. Long before the internet, we had no way to cross-reference old stuff. If you had old Dragon magazines, which I did, and you remembered that there was something in Dragon, but you couldn't remember where the article was, you had to page through each and every one. Well, this issue in August of 83 Gave us an alternative to that. It gave us a really nice article index. You could look it up, AD&D &D modules and D&D and &D modules. There you go, right there. You want to look up your Boot Hill Gaming stuff. There it was. This was so handy. The Cavalier class. Instead of having to thumb through dragon after dragon, which, by the way, was a great thing to have to do, unless you didn't have any time. Um, I thumb dog-eared the heck out of this particular issue and then they did another one, another index in about issue 112, which of course included everything on here, plus the stuff up to about issue 110. Uh, that was the index that I used after that. But for right now, this was fantastic. Character generation, character classes, unofficial. This was really important. Where the heck did I find the alchemist? And then female players and characters, fantasy games and game aids. Just all kinds of stuff. Gamma World. What, what were all the Gamma World articles? Where were they? Right there. Half Ogres. Just so useful back in the day. And like I said, I, I would keep this to hand all the time. And uh, if I was writing up a game and I couldn't remember where a particular monster was, here they all are. All the monsters that appeared in Dragon or Strategic Review up to that point. Now, I didn't have access to every one of these, of course. But the ones I did have, of course, it was really useful if I wanted to use... You know, something, uh, Frosts. You know, I had issue 33, page 36. Okay, great, I can go find it. <clears throat> and then we have Palladium, role-playing game. 
um, Palladium Game Books out of Detroit, Michigan. 280-page fantasy extravaganza. Uh, just one of the many follow-ups to D&D. Uh, I don't want to say knockoff or clone because a lot of them had a lot to offer. I never played Palladium, but I've come to understand that Palladium was a pretty good system. Uh, I never owned it, never played it, unfortunately. Role play with the best. Join the only official Dungeons & Dragons Game Club. The RPGA, Role Player Gaming Association. From TSR Hobbies Incorporated. Products for your imagination. Mystery and adventure in the Rel Partha tradition. Got that unicorn? Uh, got that fighter and that fighter, fighter mage. I uh, don't, I have that thief. Don't have the Saurians and I don't have those lizard men. Ah, uh, Ralph Partha, you guys make some good stuff out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I think Ralph Partha is still around. Some of the stuff is still available. Saved by the Cavalry, an army of knowledge for Boot Hill players. I, uh, read Boot Hill. Um, I still don't remember if I actually played Boot Hill or not. Uh, I remember one of our players, uh, one of my regular players really wanted to role play or to GM it for us. I don't remember if we ever did or not. New from Judges Guild, we have Tarantis campaign map four. Tarantis from Judges Guild out of Decatur, Illinois. A lot of people love the Judges Guild D and D stuff. I love their Traveler stuff. I wasn't real fond of their D and D stuff. I really don't know why. Out of the pond and wading into battle come the Gilla Worms, the fierce and courageous supporters of the Reptiliads. From Raffam Co uh, Company in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. So there you go. If you wanted kind of gill worms or worm or uh, reptile type creatures, this is your place. Coming over to the rest of the Boot Hill ar article. And then Villains of Vigilantes by Fantasy Games Unlimited. Oh, I did play Villains of Vigilantes. So I did play something by Fantasy Games Unlimited other than Space Opera. Uh, I like vil Villains of Vigilantes, but once I discovered Champions, I never worked ba looked back. And Hobby Game Distributors Incorporated, Chicago, Illinois. Let's see. Illinois. Uh, buyers, no. Friends, Hobby Storm, Waukegan, no. Games Plus, of course, yes. They're still around. Hobby Chess, yes. And Lyle's Hobby and Craft Centers, yes. I went to all those. Indiana. I don't see Indiana on this list. Cited. Captain's Log, Stardate, 3582.92. Star Trek Miniatures with such amazing detail. They are found only once in a five-year mission from FASA. Never did see those minis. Sage Advice. What a great column this was. I took a look at the, the Sage Advice column a few months ago on the channel. Uh, you had questions, they had answers. It was a great place to go in and get a, some deeper meaning and deeper ruling on some spells or magic items or just character rules. Uh, Sage Advice, the various editors would go ahead and answer questions. In fact... Uh, yeah, this is one of the sheets I used, one of the pages I used when I did my, uh, episode on Sage Advice. Role play your way to London or Houston this August, win a free trip by playing AD&D games. Basically, you could be awarded by being a top player. You could be awarded at Gen Con to go to Gen Con Europe. Yeah, pretty interesting. Continuing Sage Advice, page advice, how to get published. Questions and answers from TSR Acquisitions Department. They were very hungry for material. In the early 80s. I submitted a few things. I never saw publication. Back issue sale. From American Creative Games. In Mount Prospect, Illinois. Don't Not familiar with them. It's P.O. Box. So it might have just been something for mail. Off the Shelf. Alien Dinosaurs and More. Talbot Mundi. Messenger of Destiny. By D.M. Grant. From Grant Books. A Field Guide to Dinosaurs. By Avon Books. Invasion Earth. Harry Harrison. Tea with the Black Dragon, R.A. McAvoy from Bantam. Lots of them this issue. Spell Singer, Alan Dean Foster from Warner Books. Set of Wheels, Robert Thurston, Berkeley Books. Transformer, M.A. Foster, D.A.W. Books or Daw Books. Uh, Against Infinity, Gregory Benford, Timescape Books. Don't think I ever read any of those. Wow, kind of surprising because I always went to these reviews and I did pick up some books based on those reviews. Key to Freedom, Key to Triteness. Uh, I'm not really sure what the... Oh, another ad. Uh, hodgepodge of odd-looking and, uh, odd and acting aliens. Uh, this is just a review of the game. Doesn't sound like a very favorable one. There's more where this came from. Back issues of the Dragon Magazine. 
and this four to six weeks for delivery from Dragon Magazine, Dragon Publishing in Chicago, Illinois. Storm Season, Robert Lynn Asprin was the editor. Yearwood, so just more books, more reviews. Wow, lots of books and reviews in this issue. Nothing by Gary Gygax in this issue. He was hard at work on the uh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon at this time, so the, Gary didn't add a lot to the dragon in these issues. Expanding the genre of the RPG, of RPGs, Gangbusters game recreates the Roaring Twenties. Yes, another TSR offering. Uh, Gangbusters, trying to take us back to the Roaring Twenties, uh, bootlegging and Tommy guns. Never played it. Flights of Fantasy from Citadel. I love Citadel miniatures. Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Battle Mats and Mega Mats, the perfect surface to play your uh, adventures or to design that new game. I do have a Mega Mat, uh, Battle Mat around here. Uh, very nice, very handy back in the day. You could draw it right on there with an uh, erasable marker and then uh, just go ahead and erase. Unfortunately, I had, at the time, I had a larger group of people that I was casual acquaintances with and some of the jerks actually drew on it and kind of ruined the Mega Mat. Uh, drew on it with pen and with pencil and kind of wrecked it. Oh, well, those happen. That's why I'm glad I play with people I know. Hardcover editions of Dark Ages Drama. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons game system by TSR. A house ad for the game that you bought the magazine for. I like it. Borderlands is worth the price. Borderlands is a uh, new game that just came out. I'm not familiar with it, but there's a nice review for it. The new super supplement for Car Wars and Champions players is Auto Duel Champions. Auto Duel, yes, I did play Auto Duel a couple of times. Of course, played Champions many, many times. Uh, Champions was famous for crossing over with other game systems. In this case, it was Auto Duel. I didn't buy Auto Duel, Ch Duel Champions, and I don't remember ever playing it. This is from Steve Jackson Games in Austin, Texas. Steve Jackson Games published Auto Duel. Finishing up our review of Borderlands, we go to your source for a wide range of figures and games. The Tin Soldier in Springfield, Massachusetts. Survivors, a challenging new play-by-mail role-playing game from Ultimate Enterprises in Halstead, Pennsylvania. Research, research, cities, research Shows in Cities book. Uh, it's a new cities book, uh, Guide for Urban Areas. Hmm, that's interesting. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan Miniatures from FASA Corporation here in Chicago. Chivalry and Sorcery, the complete fantasy role-playing game from Fantasy Games Unlimited. And Land of the Rising Sun, also from Fantasy Games Unlimited. They put out a lot of games. Cards are in the law, are the law in Judge Dredd. Never played Judge Dredd, was very aware of it. The game and the cart the comic book. Never read the comic, never but saw the movie of Stallone. I have the law. I did see that. Uh, it is spring, 1375 BC, the Egyptian trilogy. Man, Myth, and Magic, a role-playing game of man's greatest adventures. And this was from, uh, yeah, Quinta Publications, Dallas, Texas. Federation Space, The Final Frontier, from Task Force Games, another review. Reviewed by Tony Watson. Adventurers, Rogues, and Thieves, Thieves Guild 8. Introduced the players to the proud nomads of the Golden Plateau from Game Lords in Gathersburg, Maryland. Game Masters Hobbies Incorporated, adventuring gaming specialists in San Francisco, California. Newsflash, Nuclear Esc Escalation, sequel to Popular Nuclear War is Unleashed. Here's your big opportunity. Just draw this card in any Nuclear Escalation card game and you can get 1 to 6 million population. Don't really know the game, not familiar with it. Scottsdale, Arizona. You can draw Skippy, the super virus. Okay, interesting. Alrighty, another view of Dragon Master. Yes, Dragon Master was another role-playing game. This was a card, uh, it's a card game, Dragon Master. Uh, this was out in the early 80s. It's funny, card games were around very early, but nothing really caught on until the 90s. The baseball card excitement and everything in the early 90s. And then, of course, we got Magic the Gathering. And, of course, that phenomenal game, Spellfire. And I, I don't say that laughingly. I love Spellfire. We still play it. Castle Creations, Survival Force for Aftermath and Post-Holocaust Gaming. And these guys were Fantasy Games Unlimited. And then we have the Gamer's Guide. Various games and uh, stuff for sale. 
that you could uh, take out a cheaper ad, I think. I'm not sure what the pricing was on this. And continuing that, index for advertisers. And then we go to Wormy. Yay, Wormy. I like when we got to Wormy. Dave Tramp here. And can you catch Jack the Ripper at Origins 83 and Gen Con 16? You're back in Victorian London in 1888. And this is from All at Council Publishing out of New York, New York. And then we get Starf Quest. Okay. Finishing up Starf Quest, we get, oh, what's new? Welcome to ShamCon 5. What's new is just all about being at the convention. I always like what's new. Phil Foglio. And then a couple of uh, Dragon Mirths. Uh, I always like Dragon Mirth. Introducing the stars of the Star Frontier game. And here we have Star Frontier minis. I like the Star Frontiers minis. I've able, been able to grab a few of these over the years. From TSR. And then the back of the magazine, as we usually had, an ad for Merp's Middle-Earth role-playing system, The Court of Ardor, a realm of southern Middle-Earth. So there you have it. Not even a ton of articles in this particular one, because we had a couple of really long ones, but important ones. We had the Beholder, we had the Deathmaster, uh, the Fine Index, and, of course, the Hells. That's, that's a pretty good magazine. All yours for $3. I used to look forward to Dragon every month. Couldn't wait to get it, get home. Thumb through it and try to put stuff on the table before the other players had a chance to read it. So that's all I've got to say today on Dragon Magazine, today on page 121. I hope you liked the uh, video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Leave some comments below. And I'll see you next time on page 121.